What's up guys, restaurants have been closed for four months. We're still not allowed to have clients, but I decided, hey, why not do a cooking show? Sure, it's a strange time for restaurants. The perspective of fully reopening isn't even on the horizon. Running a restaurant is all we know, or is it? Welcome to a cooking show made by your local restaurant crew. And by the way, tips are welcome. So today I decided to cook for my landlord, George. I've known George for about 15 years. He's the owner of the building here where the restaurant is. And you know, during the pandemic, he's been really cool to us. Times are tough for everybody. My brother and I, we took it upon ourselves to call our bank, put a freeze on the mortgage to give them a hand. So in times of need, I believe we have to be there to support each other and help each other. Uh, and this is actually his olive oil. So my olive oil is his olive oil. So around 10 years ago, we started importing olive oil from Crete, from uh, our own hometown and uh, Chuck started using it in his restaurant. And uh, a couple of years later, we had the crazy idea of maybe packing it for him under his own label. And the rest is history. I love this stuff. I even drink shots of it. Yamas! You know what? Opa! So today for George, I'm gonna make lamb souvlaki pita. I love lamb with George's world famous sauce. Today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make a traditional Greek dip called kopanisti. Et voila, kopanisti. George, you're the landlord, I'm the cook. Let's get started. Before we make our souvlaki, we got a couple things to do. We gotta make our dough for the pita bread, we've gotta marinate and cook our lamb, and we've gotta roast the red peppers. So you ready? Let's prep this shit up. Let's go guys. Okay. So for our pita dough, we start with a third cup of water, two tablespoons of olive oil, and two third cups of milk. Add two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of yeast. Now, let the yeast bloom for a few minutes and mix. In a bowl, start with two cups of AP flour, a bit of salt, and chopped oregano. Add the wet mix and blend everything together. When it sticks, Knead it for five minutes, then cover with olive oil. Set it aside and cover with a warm towel and let it rise for 45 to 60 minutes. Now for our lamb. Season it with some rosemary, oregano, chopped garlic, pepper, some lemon zest, and add quite a bit of salt and then rub it all in. Add a bit of olive oil, then flip it and do the same thing on the other side. Then we roll our piece of lamb and we need to tie it using butcher's twine. Start with a strong double knot, then do a loop under every one to two inches. At the very end, pass it under and secure it again. Cut out the excess twine and it's good to go in the oven on a roasting pan with a bit of water at 350 for two and a half to three hours or until fork tender. So most of our prep is done. One last thing, we want to roast this red pepper. Now, if you have a gas stove at home, pop it right on there, turn the heat on and let it go. If you don't, you could toss it on your barbecue. You could even put it in the coals of your charcoal barbecue if you wanted. Basically what you really wanna do is char and burn the skin so we can peel it right off. Whoa, you're getting a lot of matches, man. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool, right? So how about you, man? Oh, you know, it's, it's mostly shrimp. Shrimp? Shrimp's pretty cool, man. Y yeah, y yeah, I guess you're right. I, I guess it's pretty cool. Oh, who did you just match with? Uh, Butter. Really? Butter and I? Don't even get me started, man. So, you want to do this until it's completely charred? No, you burned it! I did not burn it. This is perfect. Okay? Then you take it in a metal bowl or any kind of bowl and immediately wrap it with plastic film. Now you wanna keep the heat in there and the heat's gonna kinda of steam it a little bit and then it'll make it really, really easy to take off the skin. That's it, that's all. 
Easy as that. Time to make our sauce. George, I'm not trying to steal your thunder. I know this is your recipe, so here we go. Greek feta. Roasted red peppers. Some garlic. Hot pepper spread. Give it a little spice. Lemon juice. Olive oil. We're good to go. Looks good. Now, once you buzz it all up, it might be a little bit loose. Not a big deal. Once you put it back in the fridge, it'll harden up just a little bit. But this is perfect sauce. Beautiful. I can smell it. The lamb is ready. So take it out, let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna slice it up for our souvlaki. Our lamb is resting and now it's time to make our pita breads. So our dough is ready. I'm gonna cut it into four big pieces, flatten it out and pop it in a hot cast iron pan. And there you have it. Take a little ball of dough. A lot of times you're gonna use flour when you're rolling out dough, but for this you need olive oil, okay? So make sure you get a little bit of olive oil everywhere and then just roll it out. Now, you don't necessarily need a perfect circle. But we do wanna have enough space to fill it up. So the feeling of this dough, it's super elastic. A lot of olive oil, look at all those herbs in there. All right, so you wanna leave your pita about a, a minute and a half to two minutes. You know, when the side looks like that, flip it over. Let's see, we're good to go. Pita bread's ready, now time for our lamb. As you can see, perfectly roasted. It's kinda crispy a little bit, it's got a right amount of fattiness also, so. All we need to do is just slice it nice and thin so we can put it in our souvlaki. First taste. Cancel, George. I'm keeping this for myself. That's too good. All right, let's dress up our souvlaki pita. First, you need a paper, okay? You need a paper. Then, you got your pita, okay? It's not how you do it. Let's dress up our lamb souvlaki pita. Start off with George's sauce, a little bit of lamb, okay. Tomatoes, onion, Greek basil, olive oil, why not? A little touch, sea salt, pepper. Oh now. Let's roll it up. George, souvlaki's ready. Now, to go along with this, I would pair um, maybe a grape slushy, but uh, it's a good thing I'm not in charge. Jess knows best. Jess knows best. Here we have the Domen Thimiopolis, which is a blend of indigenous grapes from Greece. Um, it has a lot of red berry fruit, cherry, strawberry, tepa nut, and tobacco. Medium body, smooth tannins. It's gonna go amazing with a lamb souvlaki. So George is on his way. I'm gonna start putting together his takeout box. I'll put all the ingredients in there throw in a few gifts, and while I'm doing that, Sam, let's make a cocktail. What's up? How are you? I'm good, you? Not bad. 
<laughs> you kidding me? I did the same thing. Awesome. You know, the restaurants are closed, obviously. The less I see my landlord, the better it is. Uh, well, here, I made you one to go. Nice. So you can try, uh, if you want to take a bite, lamb souvlaki with the George sauce. Dude, this is killer. It's awesome. This is phenomenal. Honestly, phenomenal. Wow. So, uh, so, so you have everything. Yeah, you have a, a whole batch here to make everything at home. And uh, Jess got you a Greek red wine oh, to go with everything. So, uh, yeah, enjoy, man. Next thing you know, I came up to the door and I see a souvlaki pita in my face, bro. So that's it. He stole my heart. For any Greek, lamb is a dream come true. I'm going to share this with my wife and my kids, because if they find out I shared it with somebody else, I'm getting a beating when I get home. Getting the crew back together these past couple of days, you know, it was a lot of fun. Anyways, back to the dish pit. See you guys next time. <laughs>